Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time being here, welcome. Hopefully you'll find the information exciting and interesting. Today's topic is going to be on feel gauges and various measurement devices as well. But when I when I started working on minis way back when, no one explained to me how a feel gauge actually works and the importance of using it properly. It was just sort of mentioned in the book here what clearances were what and you're supposed to know what to do with these things. Um, I never went to a trade school, so I had to learn from scratch and it's taken a long time for me to fully grasp the concept of, of accurate measurement, but I'm hoping to impress some of this knowledge onto you guys in the, today's episode. So what I want to talk about first is how the book represents measurements. So let me open the book and I'll show you what I mean. So I've opened up the book here to the intro page and I pulled up the ignition system. So since we're going to talk about spark plugs today, I figured that we should start here. Now, you see spark plugs, they mention the type, size, they say plug gap in uh, 0 to 5 inches, that's 25 thousandths of an inch, or you know, 0.625 millimeters. Um, they just give it as a spec here, and you're supposed to know what to do. And this is the point of today's episode, is that 25 thousandths of an inch is actually just a limit. They don't recommend any plus or minus variance on that, they just say 25 thou. Now, if we come down here, you'll notice, for instance, when they talk about timing advance, they give you a range, 30 to 34, or you know, 22 or 26. So, uh, depending on how the book lists the information, dictates what you're supposed to do with it. And I'll explain why in a minute. But for now, uh, just recognize how the book gives information. Again, a range versus a limit. Another example here is with the crankshaft. Uh, running clearance, 1,000 to 2.7 thousandths of an inch. So again, there's a range um, specified by the manual. So now that you've seen what the manual says about measurements, let's talk about the actual how to do a measurement and what measurements are before I get to setting a spark plug gap with a feeler gauge. And really, the discussion here today is about feeler gauges. So if you don't know, these are feeler gauges. They are bits of metal that are precision ground to be the thickness specified on the tag. This one, for instance, says uh, 20 thousandths or you know, 0.50 millimeters. Um, they come in various sizes, usually you know, down to a really small size, 002. Um, but we're going to focus on just the 25 thou in this example here. Now, for starters, you want to make sure these things are clean. Um, when we're dealing with tolerances that are a thousandth of an inch, or you're trying to figure out something that up to a thousandth of an inch, any dirt, debris, grease will affect your measurement. So first thing I always do is I always give them just a nice clean rag here, give them a wipe down, and you can use solvents or whatever you need to do to get them clean. But I want to talk about the accuracy of the measurement that is on here and why you need to check and make sure that your gauges are accurate. Now, I don't have a calibration block set to check all my tooling with. I wish I did. Those things are expensive. So until I can afford a gauge block set, I have no idea which one of these are the most accurate. But I'm just going to give you just a brief example of, of accuracy of information here. So this, this piece of steel says 25 thousandths of an inch. So if I take this style measuring tool and I stick my feeler gauge in here. So I've got the feeler blade here, 25 thou, and on this degree wheel, it says just over 25. Now I don't have any accuracy within the marks, so I know it's just slightly more than 25 thousandths according to this gauge. But let's check one of the micrometers. Here we have micrometer, and I'm using the small spring-loaded wheel on the back to Tighten this down onto this fuel gauge here. Okay. So, when we look at this, the measurement is 25. Let's check the vernier scale. Twenty-five. So this thing is saying the twenty-five thou fuel gauge blade is 25 thou. So this one is saying that it's more accurate than my other tool. 
if I were to use, say, this one, my well-worn one, it does not have the vernier scale, but it does go, uh, you know, accurately enough. So this one also says just about 25. Again, without the vernier scale, I can't tell how accurate it is past about 25. One more way I can check it is on my dial indicator on the flattening plate. So I've got a dial indicator on a piece of tile, nice flat, smooth surface, which is clean. And once again, if I bring the 25 thou feeler gauge in, we can measure it. Hopefully. There we go. So this thing says slightly thicker than 25. But either way, they're all in agreement that this is about 25 thousandths of an inch, which is really the point. Um, again, I'm not testing the accuracy of this equipment. I'm really just verifying that this is actually 25 thousandths to within some tolerance. And I know that um, they can be out of spec sometimes. I've found some of these that it can be off by a thousandths of an inch. So you always want to make sure that the things you're measuring with are accurate before you use them to measure other things with. So now that we've verified the accuracy of the feeler gauge, I'll go ahead and talk about setting a spark plug gap and along with other gaps. One additional detail I want to add is what happens to the measurement when you add shims together, or in this case, feeler gauges. So this one says 20, 22, and 25. So the combination of these three would be 67 thousandths of an inch. Now, if these are all exactly the number printed on the, the gauge blade here, I would get 67 thousandths and nothing else. But if any one of these is, say, two or three ten thousandths too thick, and each one is made the same way, then I'll have an additional clearance. So it would be 67 and then like a half thousandths or seven ten thousandths or something like that. So putting these into the micrometer here, If I lock that down, 25, 50, 65, 66, 67. So if we look here, we can see that that tick there is 67 and that tick there is 68. So when we look at the vernier scale, we will see that there is an additional amount of material above 67 thousandths and we're about 67 thousandths and a half according to the, this vernier scale. See how that mark lines up with there, mark, that mark there? Or maybe even six, six looks better. So this, this is six, seven, six, which is thicker than 67. So this is why you need to pay attention to what you're using to measure something with and understanding the limitations. Also, if you were to leave these out in the sun and then go to measure something, the material itself will expand. It'll be a, some small amount, but again, if you're using these three shims and they, you get them really hot, this might read actually 68 thousandths of an inch if they're really hot instead of 67.6. So you always wanna make sure that the tools you're using to measure are the same temperature as the things you are measuring, which is why it's important to set all of your valve gaps when the valve train is cold so that the tools and the valve train are all at the same temperature and you don't make any mistakes with just measurement error due to the material changing dimension because of the heat. And so here we are with a spark plug. This happens to be a BPR-6. Um, this one was used, and I just used this one for example. Um, anyway, when you're doing maintenance work on your car, you will find that periodically you'll have to change the spark plugs. They just wear out. What happens is the electrodes get burned away, and the, they just get corroded up or they get sooted up if your fueling isn't right. So you periodically just have to change these. Um, and even if the car is running great, you still have to change them because they wear out. Now, for this example, I'm just going to use 25 thousandths as the, the, the gap that I want to apply to this. But when you buy these brand new, they typically come with a 35 thou clearance. And even if I'm putting the brand new spark plug in a car that requires 35 thou clearances, I will still double check to make sure that the gaps are correct because 
all it takes is one plug that's out of spec and the car will run strangely at higher rpm um, or if there's a lean situation that one plug might misfire so check every single plug every single time you take it out of the car new used doesn't matter just check them just check them also on a side note these little caps are always somewhat loose so give them a little pinch with a pair of pliers to make sure they're tight before you fit the plug boots on anyway so setting your your gap now you've seen people just take these things and stick them in here and go you know well uh that's the gap and they just they just fit them in here they wiggle about and go yeah that's fine well this plug it's about 25 thou but it's a fairly loose feel and this is where the name feel gauge comes in so the idea of a feel gauge is you're supposed to understand that when you stick this into a gap that is this thickness is going to feel a certain way and this is the thing that took me a long time to understand is what does a feeling of a feel gauge feel like so again i think this is 25 and it, it is 25 because I've set this before. So I know that this is a, a proper 25 thousandths gap. But if you're just starting out, what is this supposed to feel like? And how do you know that it's accurate? So this is the little challenge that I'm going to present to you guys today is I want you to take a micrometer like this, or if you don't have one like this and you have a, a much simpler one, such as, such as something like this, I want you to take whatever it is, I want you to set it to 25 thou. So on this one here, um, we were already fairly close. Let's see. Okay, that's 25 thousands right there. So now let me know that that is an accurate space. When I stick a 25 thousands feeler gauge into that gap, I know that this is how it should feel. And this is actually very tight. Um, very, very tight fit because this is an accurate representation of 25 thousands. This is supposed to represent 25 thousands. So getting these two together should be very difficult, but not impossible. Like it's sliding, but it's very, very draggy. And that's that means that that is an accurate 25 thousands gap. Now, what happens if I take my 25 thousandths cap and I reduce it by a thousandths, so I'm at 24 thousandths according to the micrometer. Well, I could force this, but it's extremely difficult. So I managed to do it, but I had to force it in there. And I'll, of course, I'll have to, you know, force it, force it apart. So that's one thousandths of an inch too closed. What happens if you go the other way? So I'm at According to the multi, this micrometer here, I'm at 26 thousandths. Well, the 25 thousandths, again, nice, smooth, sliding fit. But now it's too loose. And that's what I'm trying to describe to you guys, is that you can use a tool like this, or you can, you know, use one of these and go down to 25. Same thing. Just take your 25 thousandths feel gauge, stick it in here, and go, okay, yeah, that's a 25 thousandths gap. Now, this one's slightly large, it's 25.5. But either way, you can use equipment like this or that to understand the feeling of drag that's applied to a feel gauge when you stick it between two parallel surfaces. So, you need to take that experience to your spark plugs. And understand the drag that comes with the 25 thousandths gap that is accurate because there's no difference between this gap and that gap so what do you do if you have a gap that's too big well you need to close it and there's a little tool you can use to tap this down um, what i like to do is i like to tap the electrode gently on say the alternator surface or something and just close it out a little bit until i've reached um, my desired gap. If I go too far, you got to open it up a little bit. Um, you'll just have to bend this electrode in or out until you've reached the, again, the desired gap. But when I do these 25 thousandths, 
an accurate gap will hold on to the feel gauge no matter what you do with it. So now that you've understood how a feel gauge should feel and how to set a spark plug gap accurately, I want to bring in one more piece that uh, a novice mini owner might have to deal with, and that is uh, adjusting valve gaps. So here's a valve and here's the rocker. You know, when they're in the car, they, they look like this. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set them on their side here. So the book describes setting valve gaps with uh, 10 or 12 thousandths feel gauges. And again, they're bringing their feel gauges in like this. So again, here's the valve. And this again, this is a flat surface. This is a flat surface. If your valves and your rockers are new and fresh, they'll have nice smooth finish here. So just like we did with the micrometer, it's the same same process applies here. You're gonna adjust, you know, you're gonna adjust the little screw until you've achieved the right gap for this space. And again, twelve thousandths is what they typically spay in the book. Your, your cams, you know, rocker clearances may vary depending on what you have. But the idea is that you want to make sure that you're getting the same amount of drag when you bring the feel gauge into the rocker and valve clearance space. When I do the rocker clearances, I always like to go too tight and then slowly work the adjuster outwards until my feel gauge just slides into place. Um, I, I always get better results that way because, for instance, if this gap is at 11 and a half thousandths, I may not be able to get my 12 thousandths feel gauge in. But the instant that I open the gap up to 12 thousandths, the feel gauge slides in, and that's when I lock it down. Because I know right then and there that I'm at exactly 12 thousandths of an inch. And the tighter you get this clearance, the more overall performance you end up with your uh, cam and rockers and just better airflow because it's doing absolutely the most it possibly can with the equipment that's in the car. And that's really the goal is performance. So whether you're setting spark plug gaps, rocker clearances, or any other clearance on the car, make sure you understand how to use a feel gauge because it's very, very important that you do. Um, don't make the mistake in thinking you know. Just spend a few minutes, take one of these, you know, or, or use this, and check to make sure that you're understanding what this represents. Because uh, if you don't understand how to do this, you'll end up with gaps that are too big, and that's always a nuisance. If you have the wrong, say, thrust clearance on the crankshaft or primary gear, and it's too loose because you didn't know how to set it properly, then you've built an entire engine and installed it in the car, only to find out that you've got too much space and you've got a cam that's, or a crank that's wandering around or a primary gear that's making a bunch of noise and you have to take it all apart and do it all over again. So uh, learning how to use these will save you a lot of time and money uh, with your car and your car project. So if you guys like that video, let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.